In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a black and white adjustment layer to this image and then use the layer mask to do this. You can find this image in the link in the description or download it in the actual course. So once you have your image open, this is really straightforward. Just come over to the adjustment area. Because remember, these are non-destructive adjustments. They allow future editing should you change your mind about something. So I'm going to add the black and white adjustment layer, which is this icon here. And remember, I can toggle my eyeballs on and off to see the effect of an adjustment, right? Or any layer. Now, essentially, I want the color from beneath to come through the eyes in this black and white conversion. This right here is a mask. It's a layer mask. And if it's a white mask, that means it's revealing everything on this layer. So this whole layer is about converting whatever's underneath to black and white. What's so revealing all of that black and white stuff. If I choose the brush tool right here, come over, I need to make this brush a lot smaller. And remember that left bracket key will make it a lot smaller visually. Now, what if I also want to zoom in a bit? Cause I'm only at 31%. If I look down at the bottom left corner, so I'll grab that zoom tool. And actually let's try a keyboard shortcut. If you hold the command and space bar for a Mac or control and space bar for a Windows user, it temporarily changes to a zoom tool, allowing me to zoom in. I can let go of just the command or the control key, holding down the space bar still, my cursor quickly goes to the hand tool. Then I let go and it goes right back to the brush tool. Essentially, I need to cut a hole in this layer to see the layer beneath. So black is in my foreground. If it's not, you can just click this foreground background reset swatch, and then you can change your color of what's in the foreground by clicking these double arrows. I need black in the foreground. I need black to paint on a white mask. I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller by using the left bracket key, and then I'm gonna click and paint. Now I wanna double check, because watch what happens if my hardness is at 100%. Yours may be at any variable here, and I'll do this side. Now I'm lucky that I have a like a hard edge uh, of this dark circle around the eye, but if I didn't, this, this edge here would be pretty distracting. Typically, I like to paint most of the times with a hardness of zero. It really fades it out, so in case there's a problem, it makes it more subtle. Now, if I overpaint, like right here, all I have to do is come over to this left and right angle, click it, and it will swap the foreground and background colors. I have trouble coming all the way over here and all the way back. So I just keep my fingers over the keyboard because I know if I type the letter X, look at my foreground and background swatches, they change. They just switch back and forth constantly. So whenever I'm editing a mask, I'll quickly like type my X to you know fix that. And then if I came out to here, I'll type X to get the white back and I'll just quickly paint it out. It allows for very quick editing. And then if I take off too much, I'll type the X again and just put back what I messed up. Using that X key while you're painting on a layer mask is really quick. I'm gonna type command or control zero to fit in screen. Now I have this image with some spot color. What I always have the freedom to do if I want to change the color of these eyes is I can add a hue and saturation layer above and just drag the hue and I can change the actual color of the eyes to whatever I want. Feel free to choose whatever crazy eye color you would like for this particular image. I need to save it. So I can save my working file, go to save, save as. So you already know this part. You wanna save it as a Photoshop file, which is .psd. This will be your working file. It will preserve all of your layers so you can come back and change or fix mistakes or make corrections or additions or alterations whenever you want. After you've saved it as a .psd, come back and also save it as a JPEG with that embedded color profile of sRGB because that's perfect for the web. And you know how to do all that by now based on the other videos you've watched up to this point. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a low contrast image with a levels adjustment layer. I'm gonna take this image and make it look like this by adjusting the contrast range. Okay, once you have your image open, wait, there's a bonus tip. Again, just to cover layer functionality even more, if you have a background layer, you can convert it to a regular layer. I can't do much to this background layer. Like I can't click and move it. Let me click. See, it's gonna say you can't do that. You've got to convert it to a normal layer. I could have clicked that blue convert to normal layer, but you can just click this lock icon and it disappears and it converts the word background to layer zero. Sometimes that's beneficial. You may need that at times. This looks flat to me, visually flat. If I were to go up to window and choose histogram, so what does that tell me? 
Got plenty of blacks. I'm clipping on the blacks, and it's okay where it's clipping. No problem with that. Got some midtones. I've got no whites or highlights, and I've got just the teeniest bit of all of these light tones. So obviously this is very flat. Okay, so let's talk photography terms real quick. When I'm talking about a flat image, I'm referring to contrast. You either have normal contrast, you have low contrast, which is considered a flat image, or you have high contrast. High contrast is lots of blacks and whites and very few mid grays, and it looks like it has a lot of contrast. A low contrast or a flat image typically is missing white tones or black tones, or most usually they're missing both white and black tones. There are a lot of fixes for this, and I'm gonna cover that in future videos in the following weeks. And the techniques are simply amazing. So stay tuned. Yes! Remember flat photographically means you're either missing black, you're missing white, most often you're missing both. But here I'm only missing one of them. So you think, oh, I, I need to adjust the image. So your instinct is to come over here to image adjustments. It's like, well, what do I do to make it brighter? Well, I could use brightness and contrast and just say brighter and just drag that over and that will work. I can, like, like, well, that's too much contrast. Maybe I need to pull the contrast back down. Well, and you keep dragging. You're like, well, some parts look good, but then some parts look bad. Here's the thing. With the brightness and contrast, it's a universal thing. It's like killing a fly with a hammer. The hammer is a one size fits all. It's going to work for some projects and some projects it doesn't work well at all. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And I'm going to suggest you use either levels or curves. Levels are the easiest ones to use in the beginning. So start off with that. And you think, okay, well, I need to adjust the image. So I'm going to go back to image adjustments, and now I'll choose levels. So you come over to image adjustments and you think, well, I was told levels was the thing to use, but look at this exposure. Maybe I should just use that. So you click on exposure and you think it just needs to be a little brighter, but this is, this can work, but you see how it's starting to blow out some of the highlight areas now? It's like, well, maybe I just need to change the gamma, make it the midtones darker or make them lighter. It's like, okay, now that's everything's way too flat and bright. Okay, that's too much contrast. I don't think I like that either. So I'm gonna go back and do the levels adjustment, image adjustment levels. Ah, now I have a histogram. So I don't even have to bother opening up this histogram because I get one built in with levels. Here's the simple thing to do. Whatever you're missing, just grab that slider and drag it to the base of the mountain. I don't need to grab my black point, right? because it's already at the base of the mountain. Call this the mountain. Wherever this data lives is the mountain. Now, if I hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the black point slider, it's gonna show me where the black is. Do you see that? See, that's, that means that is all 100% zero black, zero, zero, zero in the RGB channels, which is perfect for this image. But let me click on this white slider and hold down the Alt or Option key. Okay, now it's gotta be the inverse. So this is where I have my first pure white and these little specks that don't really matter. So I have to come all the way here before I start getting a range of tones. Look how much better that looks. If I hold down my Alt or Option key, notice how the Cancel button goes to Reset? That way I can just reset it, and I can do it while I look at it. Just drag that down until the base of the mountain, and that quickly adjusts your contrast. Now this middle slider is for your mid-tone contrast. So you can kind of drag that backwards and forwards per the scene and to your taste. So I think I like that, the very white whites right here. Click OK. Now if I were to save this and then I were to come back and open it in five minutes or in five days, and I'd say, oh, maybe I messed this up. Well, this adjustment has been permanently baked into the file. I can't change it without degrading the image quality. I can hit Command or Control Z, or remember you can go up to Edit, and it will undo the last thing you did, which is undo levels. Because remember, everything here in this image adjustments, they're all destructive, which means if you save them, you can never undo them or alter them. But you get these same controls over here in this adjustment panel. And this is the icon for levels. If you just hover over an icon, it tells you what it is, but it doesn't take very long to remember this looks like a mini histogram. So now it opened up my levels dialog box in the properties panel, and I get the exact same histogram I saw before. So I'm just gonna drag that over to the base of the mountain, adjust this to taste, pull down on the whites a touch. I can turn my eyeball on and off to see if I like it. So now I'm going to save this for the project. I'm gonna click file, save as. And again, if I wanna save my working file, which I can, I can save it as a .psd right? I've already done that. If I'm ready for output, well, I need to save this as a JPEG and it's way too big. Look at that. 51 megs. Why don't I just go ahead and go to image, image size, and choose the width, enter 1920. In the width field, it automatically changed the height, made my file size a ton smaller, 
I'll click OK. Now I'll go up to File and Save As, and I'll choose JPEG. I'll highlight to the left of JPEG and put 1920. Leave it as sRGB, click Save, OK at 12. Now when I click this one, it's saying, oh, do you want to close this before saving? No, because I've already done all my saving I need to do. I hope that helps. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.